So in a simple heat exchanger, water is to be heated from 25 to 95 using condensing steam with a gauge pressure of 1.2 bar in a double pipe heat exchanger. Again, for now, we don't have to worry about what the double pipe heat exchanger means. It's just a box in which we exchange heat. Steam flows into the equipment at one kilogram per hour. At 1.2 bar, the temperature of the condensed steam is 104.8 Celsius. Now, how convenient is that, right? Exactly the same thing that I showed you before. Same Latin heat evaporation. If all the steam condenses, then estimate the flow rate of water that can be heated in the process. Okay, so what's happening here is that we have steam. It's my beautiful drawing showing you guys here. We have steam that's entering this heat exchanger here. And as it enters here, it condenses and it leaves as liquid water. And all the steam that goes into there leaves as liquid water. And we're trying to heat up water from 25 to 95 Celsius. And the question is, how much water can I heat from 25 to 95 Celsius under these conditions? So I'll give you guys maybe five or 10 to have a go, and then we will do it together. All right, so let's have a look together here. Uh, what is the idea? The idea is that this steam is going to come in and then it's going to use, it's, it's, it's coming in at the same temperature as it condenses, right? So it's, con it's coming in at 104.8 and all of it's condensing and turning into water. So it's pretty much giving away that energy from that molecular structuring that we talked about before to the water so that it can heat up. So as it's transforming from steam to liquid. Now, the first law of thermodynamics is that that tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So we can do a little energy balance in the system and note that unless we have any energy gaps or this system is not well isolated, the only way that this water can absorb energy is from the steam and vice versa. The only way that steam can give away energy is by giving energy to the water, right? So in other words, whatever energy the water absorbs has to be equal to whatever energy steam is given away. Expect you guys were able to come up with this by, on yourself, by yourselves. Now, if water is going from 25 to 95, we can, we know how to calculate that, right? Because we just need to relate this difference in temperature, it's CP and it's the mass flow rate. In the case of the steam, however, note that the latent heat doesn't require a temperature, right? Because we're only interested because it's always going to stay in the same temperature, in this case, 104.8. Because it's always going to stay in 104.8, it doesn't really matter what's the temperature. It doesn't matter how much uh, mass we have for that. So for the case of the steam, just looking at the unit there, I just need to multiply this uh, latent heat by the mass flow rate of steam that's coming through to be able to have these two guys in watts, right? So I'm pretty much writing this equation both sides here in watts. Okay, so that means that if my, if I wanna know what's the mass flow rate that I can put through the system, I just need to multiply the latent heat from the steam by the mass flow rate of the steam and divide that by the latent of the water, uh, sorry, the specific heat of the water and the delta T of the water. Now, something interesting happens here. Check it out. Check out what happens here. I'm going to look at the units of this part that I just highlighted in green here. Okay, I'm going to look at the units here. So what are the units? Well, the latent heat is energy, right? It's megajoules. We would have converted that into kilojoules, but let's just leave megajoules for now, uh, by kilogram. The specific heat for water, it's going to be kilojoules, also energy, kilogram, Kelvin. And the difference in temperature is going to be Kelvin or Celsius. So know that this, the whole thing is going to go away. Kilograms, kilograms, Kelvin, Kelvin. And then obviously you're going to have to transform the mega into kilo, but then the two energy guys are going to go away. So that is to say that whatever unit is here on the mass flow rate of steam, is going to be the same unit we're going to find for the mass flow rate of water. The reason why I'm telling you is that because I know a lot of you guys were tempted to convert this into kilogram per second. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, it's 100% fine. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, check it out. The mass flow rate of water will be the latent heat, so that's 2.20, what was it? 03 times 10 to the third 
and that is kilojoules per kilograms, no Kelvin. And then we're dividing it by the CP of water, which is 4.2 kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. And the delta T, which is from, uh, what was it, 95 to 25? So that's 70 Kelvin or Celsius. All those guys go away. And the other term that we have is the uh, mass flow rate of steam. And I'm just going to leave that as one kilogram per hour. Okay, so all of that goes away, and this renders 7.5 kilograms per hour. So what we're saying here is that the energy that comes from the condensation of steam, which is called latent heat, is capable under these conditions, under if we have one kilogram of steam coming into this heat exchanger, is capable of heating up water from 25 to 95 at a rate of 7.5 kilograms per hour. All right, 7.5 kilograms of water per hour can be heated up from 25 to 95 under these conditions. Another way to think of this is that the relationship between the um, steam and the uh, water is at 7.5 it's proportional to 7.5. So if I want to perhaps double the amount of water, if I want to put now 15 kilograms per hour, I need to double the amount of steam, right? So I'm just going to be two kilograms of per hour of steam coming through. Now, the second part is the most interesting in my opinion, because the second part says the following. Okay, so now if the temperature of the entering steam goes to 120, Estimate the new amount of water that can be heated in the process. So now instead of thinking that this guy is coming in at the condensation temperature, which was 108.4, 104.8, sorry. Instead of thinking this, let's let the steam come in at a hundred and let me go this here. Let the steam come in at 120 Celsius. Why? Because now it's gonna come in at 120. And then it's going to go from 120 down to 104.8 and then condense. So not only will we have the energy from the condensation of the water, but we're also going to have the, the energy from the uh, steam going from 120 to 104.8. So in other words, we're going to have a little boost of energy, right? Let's look at the graph to see this better. Okay, so picture, picture this. Before we had steam coming in at this temperature, it's not 100, okay? It's 104, but just for the sake of argument. It's coming at this temperature, and then it's giving away this energy all the way until it becomes water, and then it leaves the system. And this amount of energy, and we can think about this energy here, which is this x-axis here. This amount of energy was being used for the water to be heated up, right? Now, instead of coming in at 104, the guy is going to come in at 120, like so. And if it's coming in at 120, we're going to have, still going to have this amount of energy that we had before. So we're going to have this amount of energy that we had before, like, like that. We're also going to have a boost. I'm right? going to have a little boost here. That is due to the steam going from 120 to 104. And the question is, how much more water can I um, put through? How much more water can I heat? with that extra boost. Now, what, what I would like you guys to think is, just keep it in your heads whether you think that's gonna be a tiny difference and considerable difference or a significant difference. Right? So let's imagine, think of it if the final result's gonna be like, it's gonna go from 7.5 to 7.7, .7, or it's gonna to go to, I don't know, 15, 14 or so, or it's gonna be like 20 or something, right? So a significant increase. Just keep it in your heads, think of what, how much this is going to represent, and let's do the math for this. So we just did part A of the question, and then part B would be the, okay, so again, we cannot create or destroy energy, so still all the energy released by the steam is still going to the water, right? So the, the, uh, the first relationship remains in which energy to the steam equals energy to the energy absorbed by the water equals energy given away by the steam. The only difference now is that we're going to have two components to this guy here. We're going to have the condensation component, which is going to be the latent heat related to the latent heat. We're also going to have the, um, let's call the delta T component, 
which is going to be related to the specific heat. Okay, so instead of having just the one term, we're going to have, like before, C latent times the mass flow rate of steam plus Cp delta V times the mass flow rate of steam. Note that this did not change whatsoever, and whatever is on the side of water did not change whatsoever. Yeah, so let's rewrite this equation, the whole thing. It's going to be mass flow rate of water times Cp times delta T equals latent heat, mass flow rate of steam plus mass flow rate of steam, Cp of steam, delta T of steam. Okay, note that this part of the equation, I'm going to highlight this part that I'm highlighting just now, is exactly the same as before. Okay, what is changing is this guy here. And this guy is precisely that extra boost that I just told you, just talked about. So let's calculate how much, what is that extra boost of energy, how much that is, that's going to be. We have one kilogram per hour of steam. Its CP is, according to the table, uh, steam. Cp is 2. And it's delta T is 120 minus eh, 105-ish, right? So this is going to render about 15. 15 times 2, that's going to be about 30. So that boost of energy will be like 30 kilojoules. Like 30 kilojoules coming through extra. You guys recall, remember what this was? This was 2.2 .2 times 10 to the third kilojoules per hour as well. So we're talking about yeah, our boost of energy is not that significant but let's see how much it actually renders by the end of it so the mass flow rate of water will be um grab your my equation so i don't mess up as i'm doing, putting them through cp of water delta t this is still 70 let's just put the value here so this is 4.2 this is 70 still equals 2.203 10 to the third plus, let's just put the one there as well, one plus one again, 2.0 times 15. So we went from 7.5 to 7.6. We got a 0.1 kilogram per hour extra from the boost. That's a 1.3% uh, increase from 7.5 to 7.6. A 1% increase with that extra boost. Okay, so if you guys look at the graph, that makes sense, right? Because check it out. So looking at the graph, let's actually get the, some proper values in here. I know this is not for the correct pressure, but at least for the sake of imagining, check it out. This is 100, so this is 120 over here. So we can follow this line all the way here. And then we can go down this line. It's going to be somewhere around here. So the extra boost is going to be something like this much in comparison to the blue thing, which is from here down to there. Uh, all approximately because, again, this is not the 1.2 bar, but this guy here, that's the extra boost that we just talked about. And just by looking at the graph, you can see it's little in comparison to the blue part, which is due to the latent heat. So thick. Okay, so I, I've got... We went from being able to heat up 
7.5 kilograms per hour of water to being able to heat up 7.6 kilograms per hour of water. Any questions on this uh, problem?